Okay. All right. Let's let's kick it off. Let's just let's kick this off. Danny, tell everybody about who you are, what you do, all of all of that jazz. Who are you, Danny? Man, so the million dollar question. Uh so my name is Danny, um, government Danny Boyd, um, also stage name Danny B. Um, and so I am a multi really multifaceted storyteller. Um, and so I guess like the simple way to explain it is that I'm a creative who has the gift, the God given gift to be able to use the written language, both in forms of um, poetry, of songwriting, um, the visual language of photography, and also the musical language of music composition. And so because of that trifecta, I've essentially found a number of amazing opportunities that, you know, we're eventually going to get into later into the hour, and I'm going to break down like how all of those can actually help you as a musician um, in the music industry. Uh, but so simply, um, I'm a creative um in the music space i'm a um, songwriter i do do spoken word and sing occasionally and i'm a music composer so keep it simple let all the gems just flow out through the interview what doesn't he do right how did you meet me how you know me how, how we connect so that's i was gonna say that for the interview because that was like one of the perfect <laughs> answers to the question it's okay but i was I'll wait. I'll wait for that story then, since he's going to slide that in a little bit later. But, okay, so we know about your background and what you do, and everybody's coming in here shouting out Danny now. Uh, so well, let's, let's, yeah, let's jump into these questions, because these are some good questions. All right, so let's, kicking it off, what is the best way to set up your music and stay organized with all the different paperwork? Like, how? What, what's your advice about managing that? as a self-managed artist? How do you deal with that? Uh, so first, before I get into that, um, I actually want to break down self-management because I think that's a term that a lot of people may not be familiar with. So within the industry, um, we all are familiar with having a manager or you know, hopefully everybody's familiar with the concept of having a manager. And so let's say you're um, a rapper, you know, you're good at rapping maybe you make beats or something like that but you may find a manager who's responsible for getting you booked on shows who's responsible for looking over your contracts and all these different things and so ideally when people blow up that's kind of their situation but the reality is that if you're just starting out chances are you may not have a manager or you may not have access to a manager yet and so that's where the concept of self-management comes in. And so self-management essentially means that you're responsible for booking your shows. You're responsible for negotiating your contracts. You're responsible for handling your licensing deals and all of that. Um, and I actually figured out this concept through this book. Uh, it's called um, The Business of Artist Management. And so this was such a blessing because I was going through, you know, the early stages where I'm like, okay, well, do I need a manager? And so basically they start off and they say, um, when you're first starting off, you're really self-managed. And the most important thing you can do is recognize and claim yourself as being self-managed because you're adding a level of professionalism to your craft when you say I'm self-managed because whenever you walk into a space and somebody's like, oh, do you have a manager? And you just say, oh, no. You know, they're like, oh, well, you're not there yet. But if you can say, like, I'm self-managed, I handle my booking and everything, that's going to elevate your level of professionalism. That's going to open so many more doors for you and opportunities. Um, and so to get back to the question, um, the first thing is Office Depot and Office Max. Like, I cannot tell you how important it is for staying organized from a business context going and getting basic things like file folders. Um, so like I have a file folder for all of my different um, papers, such as like copyright registration, such as contracts, such as licensing agreements and everything like that. And it sounds like archaic, but it's, it's tremendously helpful to have physical file folders to be able to keep all these documents organized. And that's important because if a new opportunity comes to you, for example, and you may not 
necessarily remember the terms of your last contract. I can just pull up in my file cabinet, look and say, oh, this is kind of what I you know negotiated based on this. So this is where we can start or a starting point. Um, same thing for like your computer, just having a simple um, file structure to be able to keep track of you know all of your tracks, all of your like copyright registrations, all of your metadata and things like that. Um, so those are two very important things to use to be able to um, keep keep organized and manage your music. Yeah, we have a live question for you, Danny. Do you see that? Do you see uh, it here? Uh, what is the best way to get your mom to understand your vision goals? Ooh, that is a good one. That is a good one. I have. So the question, so I'm going to repeat it. So the question is, what is the best way to get your mom, family, friends, support to understand your vision and goals in the music scene? So Danny, take it away. So I went through this with my mother and I can say that one, having a mother to ask you or test you is a gift from God because one, you know, nine times out of 10, like if your mother wasn't in the music industry, she has no conception of what it is that you're trying to do. And, you know, if you have a good mother, she wants, you know, everything to go well for you. She wants your best interest in mind. And to do that, they're going to test you through and through. They're going to ask you things like, well, how are you going to make money? How are you going to support yourself? They're just going to ask questions after questions. And so it's not necessarily to discourage you, but it's really to challenge you to prove that you have a vision. And so I remember like the day that I, you know, started to really get my mother on my side, like outside of her coming to one of my performances was when I can just lay out like, this is exactly what I'm doing. This is how I'm going to make money. This is how I'm going to generate revenue. And when I was able to lay it out line by line, like her entire demeanor changed. So she's like, okay like that's it and so really it's just about developing the confidence through um through research through learning and also through practice so you know when you get to that point where you can break it down to your own mother like that is god saying like you ready to be you know out here to breaking it down for anybody yeah i love it i i think i think i saw this quote one time that it says some of your biggest supporters are strangers and it's a hard pill to swallow, but it's true. So don't feel discouraged that your closest friends and family, you know, maybe in the beginning stages of your career or, you know, if you even call it a career yet, but even if you're just starting, just don't get discouraged. You know, sometimes they need to see the momentum before they believe. And I know that that can be tough because you need the belief before the momentum, but just realize that that's why it's so important to surround yourself with other artists, other positive people that are along the journey that understand what you're going through so they can keep you accountable and motivated. Um, so they said respect to that. All right. So, okay, we're starting off good, Danny. Okay. So he, he kind of helped us get organized, you know, going to the Home Depots, getting things digitally organized and physically organized, all that good stuff. So the other question was, how do I stay motivated and inspired as a creator? I think this is a good one for you, Danny. Like, how do you stay motivated? How do you not burn out and and just, you know, not be focused? And how do you inspire yourself as a creator? Um, I would say the two biggest motivations for me, one is reading books about other creatives or entrepreneurs and two, being able to switch between mediums. And so, um, so last, I think last fall, the last winter, I was reading this book on Pixar and how they got started. And so, uh, the guy, what was his name? Um, how was it slipping me? Um, but so anyway, the guy, he had a dream as a child to create a computer animated film and he's going at it like crazy but he didn't really like hit the stride of what became Pixar until he was like 39 years old and so being able to read somebody else's story and see the scale of the journey is tremendously motivating because sometimes when we're kind of like really isolated just on grind mode we think like oh well by the end of this year it's gonna pay off by next year or something like that and it's easy to lose perspective of how big the journey actually is and so to be able to read somebody else's story is just tremendously you know beneficial from like a you know mental and emotional standpoint to be like yo like this is a big lifelong journey like i don't have to do it tomorrow 
Um, and then like the second point is um, switching between mediums. And so one of the things that helped me is because I am multidisciplinary. If I feel that I'm like burning out on music, I can just hop over to photography. I can hop over to music. I mean, not music, um, it's a spoken word. I can hop over to, um, you know, graphic design because I do have a design background. And so it's tremendously therapeutic, but also, and I, I'll probably touch on this later, um, it's actually extremely beneficial to your overall career as an artist to have those other skill sets. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much how I get motivated, just, or stay motivated just being able to, um, you know, re-contextualize re, uh, myself with the grander scheme of life as a journey, and then just having additional outlets to be able to switch between. That's great. Like, for me, I, I did, I'm not necessarily a musician, right? But there is some creative things that I do. So one of the things about me that a lot of people don't know, but it's something I love to do to stay inspired is documentaries so I really like watching like you were saying watching someone's story of how they started something the struggles everything they went through to become who they were and I feel like that's really important and it doesn't always have to be in the music business it could be in anything that inspires you right and the other thing I love to do is actually watching behind the scenes of studio sessions like how they create albums yeah. I, I absolutely, I obsess over that on YouTube. Like I constantly watch old, you know, records of old people, you know, going through the motions in the, in the studio and the talking and the writing of the scenes. And the, so I think that creative process is so dope to document that it inspires me, even though I'm not in the studio, maybe one day I'll be in the studio, but yeah, <laughs> that inspires me watching other people create something that's different and it doesn't always have to be music were you going to say something do not sell yourself short Gabby. like do not we i, I let you do it um, me yeah, yeah like <laughs> all the creativity um but so actually that brought up something for me so it's not on hulu anymore i think they took it off but there's this series called like sound bombing or sound something but it's a music documentary series and each episode covers the different things like singing production and it was just so inspiring um because like one of the episodes they were talking about the beatles and how before uh you know like all the digital stuff that we know now they have you know the old school like tape recorders and they're doing all these crazy things like taking a leslie speaker and getting like this echo effect and everything and i'm just like oh my god like the beatles were crazy creative different times that mm -hmm. you know you just never know and like like Danny said being multi-talented and stepping into different art forms will help you stay inspired too mm -hmm. so you know um just yeah just keep pushing yourself I I like that that comment of just trying new things seeing new things so let's deal with burnout kind of was talking about that a little bit earlier sometimes I burn out what's your best advice on managing your mental health when you're managing your own career like how do I manage my own mental health when I have all these different things going on, sometimes I'm burnt out. What's your best advice about that? Get off social media. Um, but so seriously, um, so one of the biggest struggles, I guess, for this current generation is our dependence on social media for the purpose of promoting our craft, our business or whatever. And so it's easy to kind of get locked in this mindset of like, man, I'm tired of social media. Like I'm not feeling the energy, but I feel obligated to be on it. And sometimes you really just need to cut it off to allow yourself to regroup because if you're not healthy, that's eventually going to come through in your craft, you know, in your, in your music and your lyrics or whatever. And people are going to pick up on that. Like if you just hit this bad phase, you know, this bad season of life where you're like, you know, talking about like the whole Will and Jada thing or whatever, like that could, you know, turn off your audience and so, um, like, I'm a true believer, like, if you're in a completely healthy space, it will come through whatever you do and people will gravitate towards that. Um, but, you know, outside of that, um, like, I'm a big outdoors person. Like, I love biking and hiking. So, like, I feel completely grounded whenever I can just get out in nature. Um, like, there's this place here called, um, like, Castlewood State Park. And so, whenever I go there, even, like, I take some of my um, friends, like, you know, creative and non-creative. But literally, like, when we start on the trail, we have, like, all this stuff going on in our minds. Like, man, I'm worried about this. 
And literally, like, as we progress down the trail, we start to really break down a lot of this stuff. And by the end, we didn't, like, figure it out our whole life. Be like, oh, we ain't stressed. We ain't worried about nothing. Um, but just having, like, different outlets, whether it be, like, racing remote control cars, go-karting, anything, just having something that can bring you back to center to keep you grounded. Yeah, for me, uh, therapy helps my mental health. Um, I, I think it's extremely healthy and normal. Hopefully more people want to do it and not afraid of talking about it. So I think it's really important to talk about your feelings, talk about what happened to you or just different things like that. If you want to journal or, um, you know, talking to friends are great. But I think like for me, my mental health, going to therapy, having a faith background, and then also making sure that I watch what I'm consuming. So when Danny was talking about social media, social media is a great avenue for your business and a great avenue for your career, but also who you're following and what you're consuming. Even the music that we consume, it does take a, a toll on our mental health. So I'm very cautious of what I listen to and what I consume. And even conversations with friends and family, if I notice that it's shifting negatively, I got to go. So, you know, you have to protect your peace. And I feel like that's very important in protecting your mind, because like you said, the creativity comes from here, right? And in here, right? So when this is not right, take a pause and then realize, you know, maybe, yeah, like you say, take a hike. Maybe I need to talk to someone. Maybe I need to stretch, maybe work out. So it just depends on, and for me, working out works because I get frustrated and I get stressed. <laughs> And I got to punch. So I love kickboxing. But anyways, enough about that. But yeah, so you got to figure out what works for you mentally to just release the stresses of life and in a healthy way, not, you know, the other ways I've seen people do it. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. I'm a new artist. How should I go about making connections besides attending music industry events? How do you make connections right now? slide in the dms um so this is actually the point so to like to rehash or to you know break down the story of how i even got connected with debbie so 2020 when the pandemic first started like everybody's kind of you know panicking like how am i gonna live how am i gonna survive all of this and so i remember um, actually the backtrack so i ended up following artist hustle through um through Julian, Julian Keaton of Julian's Jewels. Um, and so, you know, that's how I found out about Artist House, so I'm already, like, following and everything. And so one night I'm just, you know, on Instagram, and, you know, I see this live, and it's like, um, you know, resources for artists or something like that. And I'm just, you know, tuned in. I'm like, yo, this is good information. Um, but at the same time, um, like, I'm plugged into a lot of local things here and a lot of national things. And so I had, like, a lot of other resources that I was getting. And so after the live, I'm like, yo, like, I really appreciated what you did. Like, here's some other information. And so Debbie is like, yo, thank you. This is dope. Why don't you come on and talk about it? And I'm like, hey, okay. And we literally had, like, this whole, it was like two, three hour <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was. It was a wild night. And we had more people. Somebody from, I think, was the producer from Paris? And then one guy was from New York. Like, it went crazy in the night. We ended up sharing poetry. Like, it was cray, cray. And that was recent. But then there was a live that we did back in 2020. And that went really well. Too. Like, so... Danny, what Danny did, just to kind of stop right here, but what Danny did, why did I decide all of a sudden to connect with Danny? Just because he sent me a DM. It was because he said, he wasn't saying, hey, check out my music, or hey, go follow me, or hey, come to my event. He's like, oh, she's giving out resources? I know resources. Here you go. And I'm like, I don't get those DMs. All the DMs I get is, check me out. What you trying to do? hollering at me you know what I mean just inappropriate stuff so he came with the mindset yo I'm just trying to help you do what you are already doing and I know things too and I'm like oh I gotta connect with people that you're on the same tip as I am so when you find people like that gravitate towards them because you just never know where people are gonna go and you want to stay connected to these amazing people so I appreciate Danny because you know, if he didn't do that, I would have known him, you know? And even like you said, he was connected to Julian, who was connected to me, because I've been knowing Julian for a while, because he put out content, different things like that for marketing and different things like that. So 
this is just so crazy that yes, that's how we met. He slid in and I was like, yeah. And then even now with this new series, I'm like, Danny, you got to come on. Let's like get you in here. And you know, we were just talking about random other things. And I'm like, Danny, we need to do a live about managing your own music career, like self-management. This is so good. So <laughs> yeah, and it's sort of like kick it back up. Uh, you know, just like you said, um, you can't reach out people reach out to people with like this give me mindset because there's a ton of people that are constantly like yo like check me out um even as like an artist like i get so many people that'll just hit me up like yo let's work and it's like well you don't even know anything about me if we're even compatible but it's like this mindset of like you have something i want or i need like come here and it's like no like that's how you get blocked. Um, but so literally, you just have to be um, humble enough just to be able to say, like, I see that you're doing something of value here. Like, I hope I can contribute in some kind of way without having the expectation of them doing anything re in return. Um, it's just, you know, managing your expectation because even like off of social media, whether it's, you know, talking to like family, because a lot of times like your family probably know somebody what is like the uh, three degrees or seven degrees of separation or something like that like they probably know somebody um you know friends or anybody else uh, but you know at the end of the day it comes to you know just humbling yourself and having like reasonable expectations of what you're actually giving not not what they're going to give to you but what can you contribute you know what can i contribute towards a potential relationship and at the same time it may not take off right away because even after that first live that was back in 2020 and then you know we didn't reconnect until like uh like a whole year later and so you know just being patient you know being on you know god's schedule not your own schedule okay so partly that's my fault so <laughs> Danny's being nice, but let me throw out the tea. So I took a hiatus in 2021. I was burnt out. They was like, what happened to Artist Hustle? What the heck happened? And I was like, I'm done. I, I, I literally cannot. I And then also I got distracted. I think one thing, when you're managing your own career, whew, and there's certain opportunities that will come, and you may say yes to it, and it has nothing to do with your goals. And then you realize like, yo, I just said yes to all these other things and they sound great, but they're not actually helping me move towards what I really want to do. And so that's what happened for me in the year 2021. It was, I was distracted. I was a part of a startup. I was on a nonprofit board. I was volunteer. I was leading. I was like, I was so like, obviously on social media, you didn't see much from me, but I was moving and shaking like, you know, but then I came back to the core and I was running away from the vision that I had for this because I didn't understand what this will look like. And yeah. so um, just be careful of giving up even on yourself during the journey of managing yourself and dealing with different things like that. But Danny, like he said, he still he could have a mindset of no, I'm not trying to deal with you. You ain't posting it over a year. You didn't, you know, so. You know, I, <laughs> but you know, clearly we, we still connected, but yes, like you said, timing. So don't feel like, oh, I haven't heard from this person. It's been three years since I saw them at an event or I connected with them. Send them a new email, send them a happy mother's day, father's day. How are you doing? Or happy, you know, whatever, try to get people's birthdays. I always like to get people's um, birthday information to text them. Happy birthday. So just figure out ways to stay connected, especially with good people and good energy. You need that in your life for sure. So and don't she think does, you have to make connections. Oh, go ahead, Danny. She does do the birthday text because my birthday was over the weekend. She was like, hey, <laughs> happy. I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I do. I love birthdays. Love to celebrate. Yes. So, Danny, yeah, y'all got to shout him out. You know, his birthday just came through. He's a Leo. We all learned that on the live. <laughs> and I'm a sex. So, so, yeah, but I... I I love it. I, I love the fact that we're talking about this because it's so important to make these connections. And don't think you have to make them. Sometimes just being open while you're at the airport or even when you're in the grocery store, you just don't know who's who. Be open. Even if you've lived in the city all your life or maybe you move somewhere new. I think for me, I'm moving to a new market and I'm there's this nervousness spirit, but I'm also trying to make sure I break up that so that when I need to make the right connections, I will. And I'll open myself up to meet who I'm supposed to meet. But um, just have to sign it to you. A quick mm -hmm. note on that. So um, so let's say, like, if you're in a particular city aside from, like, New York or L.A., you know, like, from yeah. St. Louis. And so what I realized, like, you know, people would be like, 
man, it's the same people. Uh, you know, I'm tired of dealing with the same people. But in fact, it's actually not the same people because there are seasons where people, they'll try to go to a New York or L.A., whatever, for whatever reason, they come back. Like, they from St. Louis, but you never even knew they existed until this random, you know, event. Or you have people that move, like, I know for a fact there have been people that have moved to, like, Chicago, um, Indianapolis, ATL, or whatever. And so, literally, like, every year or every couple of years, you know, every so often, you will get, like, new faces that will pop up. And, you know, they they may not be new in, you know, the grand scheme of the city, but they're new to you. And because they've came back with this different, you know, um, experience, they're, you know, renewing their interest in their hometown, they're looking to connect. And so I can't tell you how many people I've met that are like newly back in St. Louis that are like, yo, like I ain't been back in a minute. Like, yo, I'm just trying to get back on the groove. Yeah, I I definitely agree. I, even me being from the DMV area, Maryland, for those who don't know what DMV means, but from Maryland, you know, there is, you know, you, you have to get to know people. You have to step outside of what's familiar and just stop thinking. You're, it's your mindset. That goes back to what we were talking about. Your mindset, you have to feed yourself and you have to believe it even before you see it. So even if your reality doesn't match your potential, you can't act like it. Sometimes you, I like even for me, um, affirmations are helpful too, right? Even before I see it, I talk about it. But like you said, be open. And even if you meet the same people or the same kind of, because Julian mentioned that too with uh, St. Louis, like you, it's kind of small. You kind of meet the same people over there. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know anything about that market. But uh, yeah, so. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that was a good tip too. Um, just realizing that you never know who who's coming back in the market, who may be visiting or whatever it is. So just make sure that you stay in there. Uh, someone says Chicago. I guess they're Shots. in Chicago. Just there okay. like a couple of months so. ago for the Coldplay concert. <laughs> Okay, that's good. And I see your live questions. I will get to them. Danny's going to get to them. Let's finish up some of these other questions that we have. Uh, So, okay, so now we're switching gears to social media. How can I decide the best platform to promote my music? If I'm the only one, I don't have a music manager, a publicist. Danny, how do you figure out which platform? There's so many to choose from. How have you chosen to niche down on a certain social media platform? To oh, so the two art? things, um, what are you naturally good at and active on? And where is your audience at? And so for me, like coming from a visual arts background as a photographer, like Instagram was just natural to me. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm already, you know, popping on Instagram as a photographer. Like when I made the transition to music, it's like, okay, well, let's, you know, start with what I'm already familiar with. Um, you know, like I'm on Twitter, but Twitter just isn't really my game. So I really don't invest a lot of time on Twitter, uh, Facebook, like friends, family, um, you know, acquaintances and things like that. You know, that's another, um, so, you know, Facebook and Instagram have been my main two. Um, and I mean, there's, there's a number of rules of play, um, whether it's like just trying to go out and claim whatever, um, you know, territory, whether it be Snapchat, TikTok, or whatever. But at the end of the day, you kind of just have to find what organically works for you. Because if you find some like social media strategy online that you've never heard of, never tried before, and you try to implement it, you're not going to be successful because you can't be consistent with something that doesn't come natural to you. So, I mean, you can eventually grow to that point where you're like, all right, well, it's time to expand. Like, where can I expand that? Then, you know, that's cool. Um, but when you're just starting out, just start with what's organic to you as a, you know, as an individual. I agree. Some people, they, they have the personality to do video. And some people, audio. And some people, you know, you do have to make a mix. You have to understand your audience. And some people, they like to write, you know, you just have to figure, like you said, figure out what your strengths and your weaknesses, create the content and just put it out there and make sure, like you said, if you know, most of your audience is towards younger kids, we know the TikToks of the world. That's really where you should be at. If it's for older and grown and sexy vibes, then maybe you want to be on Facebook or grandma Mm -hmm. and my auntie and them, right? So you just, (laughs) maybe you're into rock and maybe they're on Twitter, like, you have to figure out where your tribe is and go and look at the analytics and just the data of each platform and test and try and see where you can, you know, get the most engagement too. So were you going to say something? Yeah. Uh, so actually, um, yeah. so one of the best things you can do 
if you haven't done it already, create, um, what is it, a business or a creator page on either, you know, any of those platforms and start collecting your metrics and data. Because for me, um, so I had to create my own marketing plan and I'm like, all right, so where's my target demo? So all I did was went on Instagram, went on Facebook and it says your target demo is between like 25 and 35 and like 35 to 45 it's like 50 what is it um like 51 percent female 40 49 48 percent male and so that's like a starting point like that's gold so i'm like all right so based on that information you know snapchat and tiktok probably is not going to be for my demographic so i can focus in on facebook and instagram um and then you know your location is another big thing um, you know, if you're going to do social ads, make sure you are targeting the right market. It drives me crazy when I see an ad from somebody in like North Carolina, like, hey, come to this event. I'm like, I'm in St. Louis. Like, just wrong. Just, yeah. just completely wrong. I mean, tic- the only thing with TikTok is, is they're, they're shifting everybody over there. They're like, man, you got to catch that last yeah. wave because it's just. So it's just these these channels keep popping up, up and up and up. So it's just it, it does get a lot, especially if you're managing it by yourself. It does get a lot. You dominate on one and then you hear about another one and then you hear about another one and then you hear. So I think what's so important, even if you expand to TikTok or whatever else is coming, make sure that you gather the details of your followers. I think not enough people remember that they just focus on the numbers. But who's on your email list? How many names do you know? How many phone numbers do you have? How many birthdays, zip codes? Make sure you actually have collection data on these people and not just, oh, I have all these followers, but I can't do anything with them. What if the platform shuts down? What if you get banned? What if you get locked out? You're screwed. So make sure that was always your goal is to get the attention from the platform, but also get the information, get them to get off the platform and onto what you have going on. So that means you have to create amazing content to do that, right? So, so um, yeah. I guess like last thing, so going back to like text marketing. So when I mm-hmm. first came out as a musician and, you know, like a solo artist, like writing original songs, I literally just had a private event where the only people I invited were people whose phone numbers I had. And I just sent them texts like, hey, I'm doing this private show. Hey, I'm doing this private show, completely independent of all social media. It was tremendously successful, one, because of the relationship, but two, as you said, um, you have ownership of your audience because there, there are you know, tons of stories of people that they develop these huge followings on Instagram, then their account gets hacked and they got to start from square one. So, I mean, yeah, like once you get to that point, you know, you got to you pretty much have to do the social media thing. But, you know, going back to when you're starting out as self-managed, like start from, you know, square one, something that's manageable and ownable. Yeah, there was a comment that just came in and uh, said, I got banned from Facebook recently and I have no idea why. I'm glad that most of my followers were on my email list. Right. Boom. 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 Oh, you know what? How did you convert them? Can you drop that in the comment? Like, how did you convert them? Was it certain content? Was it certain things? I'm just always curious how people convert because I'm working on that plan right now. Like, how do I pay? I got them in, but how do I convert that? And how do I build that relationship and get them to get off the platform onto other things? So, yeah, you can drop with some of the things that you did. Let's go to the next question, Danny. So, okay, it's competitive. What's your best advice about staying competitive in the music game, like in the music industry? How do I stay competitive? There's so much competition. What's your advice? Um, so I'll say like from two perspectives, one from like an industry, like peer to peer perspective, um, and then also from like an audience perspective. So from the peer peer to peer perspective, the one thing that will always keep you in game is what you know, knowledge and you know, who you know, obviously. Um, so there was some some quote I said where uh I'm not said, um, I saw where it says something about like 10% of like all your like success or connections or something is going to come from the information you know and that people can get from you. And so literally like if you're um, like, you know, I'm an avid reader of like Variety and Billboard. And so because I know all of this information, I can walk into a space 
and somebody will be stumped by something. I'm like, yo, like, this is what this is. And they're like, oh, my God, like, I need you in my life. I got to keep you around. And so if you have that value that you can add to people's life, you know, going back to the whole DM thing with Debbie, if you have that value, people will always put you into the fold with different opportunities. You know, if something's coming up, like, yo, like, hey, we need you here. You know, you know, such and such um, that we don't know. And you're always going to be there. So, like, as a rapper, for example, like, if you know the game, the producer, whoever, going to be like, yo, like, I need you in the studio with me. And then if an opportunity pop up, you're like, yo, I'm here. Like, you know, let's work, you know, things like that. Um, And then from, like, an audience standpoint, I think, um, at least for my audience, um, I have kind of like a socially conscious audience. So they're very sensitive to various things, such as... um, like when the whole Brianna Taylor thing, like a lot of my audience was like big on today. And it's like, I'm listening. I'm like, oh, this is what you all care about. So just being, you know, listening, being mindful of, um, you know, what your audience is talking about, because the last thing you want to do is do something that they may feel is insensitive. And you basically like torpedo the portion of your audience. That's why branding is key. Branding is so key. When you know who you're speaking to, that matters. Because like you said, socially conscious, that means when things are happening in society, unjust, Danny's front lines. Hey, what are we talking about, Danny? What do you have to say? So when you know your brand, and we talked about this before, you know, when you think and want to consume or want to talk about a certain topic or subject or product, you think of X, Y, and Z. You think of Danny, right? You think of Danny if that's what you want to consume. So it's so important to do that. And like Danny said, you know, how do I stay competitive? Get to know, expand your network, expand who you know, because even if you're not, okay, I would have, what if I'm a producer or what if I'm a songwriter? Well, then get to know other people. People know people, people, people. You can just be a plug. I'm telling you, that's one of my greatest gifts in life is knowing people who know people who do things and when you are that person that understands oh yeah oh you need that oh i know someone you know like you said some type of value even if you don't have a, a whole bunch of skills but knowing people and people knowing you matters and that's how you stand out that's definitely how you stand out i'm telling you just just keeping up with your uh, you know your connections whether it's personal, business, whatever it is. But let's jump into the next thing, Uh, Danny. All right, so I have a full-time job. This person said, you got any tips on managing my music while working a day job? What's your your advice on that, Danny? Man, man, man. Uh, So I was actually thinking about um, this whole thing. And so I guess to start it off, um, so when I first got into music, um, I was a guitar player. I played in bands. And so I literally said, okay, I want to get better at guitar. Like, how can I do this? Well, I want to practice. Well, how do I be consistent? And so I literally would start off with like a 30 minute block each day. I'm like, okay, I'm going to spend 30 minutes just sitting down, practicing my skills, practicing my picking techniques, you know, you know, basic rudiment skills and everything like that. And then I got to a point where I'm like, oh, like, I'm liking this. Like, let's bump it up to an hour. And so the first thing is just having a consistent block of time that you can dedicate towards your music, um, whether it be at nighttime, whether it be in morning before you go into work, whether it's on the weekend, but just find like some manageable piece of time where you can be consistent and, you know, just consistently, you know, grow at your craft Um, and start small because, if you just try to say like, all right, on a Friday, I'm just going to hit it hard. I'm going to do five hours because I'm off. But then you may fall off and you have to start all, all the way back over again and rebuild that consistency. So just take like, you know, a little small step and, you know, make it short enough to where at the end of that time, you're like, man, my time is up. I can't wait till next time because as long as you got that passion, you're going to be excited to keep on doing it. Uh, So that's the first thing. Um, And so I guess going into like the whole jobs thing. So that's a very interesting topic. Um, So the first thing I would ask is to assess your level uh, or your comfort comfort with taking risks. Um, because that's the most important thing. Like, what is your level of risk tolerance? 
Are you the person like I need stability in my life? Like I don't like a lot of risk. Are you the person that's like, yo, let's like go big or go home? And so like if you're very risk averse, meaning that you don't like taking a lot of risk, then what's probably gonna work for you is making sure that you know you keep that full time job where you got that income coming in, and then you know you can do your music at nighttime after you get off, or maybe on the weekends, and then you can gradually scale up in terms of like the amount of money that you're bringing in or the amount of time that you're um, you know able to dedicate towards it. And then if you get a little bit comfortable um, or if you're already at this point, then you can look at kind of like scaling back on your, like, you know, your day job or your full time job. So that could be if you have something that's flexible, like I had a friend where um, they allowed her to have Fridays off. So she still did like 40 hours a week, but they would let her do that between Monday and Thursday so she can have like all the Friday just to focus on the crowd. So you can do something like that. Or if you're, you know, at a point where you're bringing in enough money or you're comfortable with the risk, you can uh, downgrade to, you know, a part time job or something that's a little more flexible or like a gig job or something like that. So where you still have that, you know, that that stable income that's coming in, but you're able to dedicate a little bit more time towards your music. Um, because of the reality is that if your goal is to become full time in music, at some point, you're going to have to make the investment of time or money or whatever. And so it's just about, um, you know, finding uh, manageable steps to get yourself up to that point, whether it be, um, you know, you kind of get this blow up opportunity where you where they're like, here's a contract for X amount of money, or, you know, you get the YouTube followers or whatever, and you can just say, okay, forget this job, like it came overnight. Or if it's more like gradual, like, you know, we got to build it up, build it up. But at some point you have to visualize, like, what does that end goal look like? Like, what would me doing this full time actually look like? And that kind of goes into the next question is uh, the person asks, I want to quit, but my music don't make me no money. What should I do? What, Danny, what you got to do? The, the music ain't, it's not giving me the money. I'm just giving everything for free, but I ain't making no money, but I want to get this job. So should I, should I, you know, live on somebody's couch, go after this career or like eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and, you know, do that whole struggle thing to really make it? Because, yeah, I'm a real artist. That's a real artist. I've talked to so many artists. So what, what's your thoughts on monetizing your music career so you can quit your job? Because that is your ultimate. Most most of my viewers and most of the community, that's what they ultimately want to do. They want to do this full time. You know, they would love to create more and make income doing it and other different things. So what's your advice about that, Danny? Oh, <laughs> like going back to the risk tolerance, like what's your level of risk? And, then, you know, once you get that figured out, um, what are your liabilities? Like, do you, owe, do you have money for rent? Uh, do you have to pay rent? Do you have a car note? Do you have bills and all of that? Um, do you, are you by yourself? Are you living with a partner or parent, um, roommate or something? Uh, because I actually, so I did this workshop on entrepreneurship and one of the things they said was we get so consumed with what we are willing to do, but we don't think about how our decisions affect other people. And so that's like, if you have a spouse, you know, you can't just up and quit your job. Like baby, this is it, you know, without their input because you have, you know, an obligation to that significant other. Um, so thinking about like, what's your, what's your comfort level um, with, you know, staying in the job with, you know, just saying, you know, forget it. Um, because like going back to like my photography career. So when I was a photographer, you know, I was literally like, I was in college, I was living with my parents. So when I was living with my parents, there was absolutely no reason for me not to take risks. Like if I have that stability, like I need to be out here doing whatever I can to make it work. And that's exactly what I did. So if you have any type of stability, like you just need to get out there. Um, and then also like I'm big into uh, like investing. And so they have like all these diagrams and breakdowns of how to like balance like risk and risk and everything like that. And so if you think about like, how like how like if my day job has me here in terms of income and my music is down here 
um, you know, how do I balance that out? Um, and then the first thing with the music is you have to have a system to be able to even get money and collect money and manage money to begin with. Because if you don't have that, like, you know, you're lost. And so even with me, when I got into music, the first thing is like, well, I need to understand the game. Like, how do I even get royalties and all of that? And so, you know, your information and then you're outperforming, you start building up, you building up. But then at some point, you're going to hit a wall, depending on where you're getting your money from. So if you're doing live performing, realistically, there's only so many hours that you can do that in, uh, you know, in, in a concert with your job so as a live performer at some point this is gonna have to come down so this can continue to continue to go up um but if you're like a producer and you're doing like beats or if you're doing a songwriter you're getting royalties you have a little bit more flexibility but you really need even if you have to like write this down on paper uh you know you just need to figure out like what's that balance of income um and time and everything like that and how can i you know finagle this to get to where i want to be I love it. I, I think you you have to get to the point when you're like, okay, I can't just wait until my salary or my hourly matches my music. Sometimes there is this risk that you just have to take. And so um, I think what's important is even if that means getting roommates, sometimes you got to humble yourself. Oh, I'm 30. I'm not trying to live with no roommate. You better go live with that roommate if you want this career. So just, you, you got it. you can't, ego can't be in the mix when you're trying to make it. When you're really trying to go after it, you got to do whatever, be wherever, do whatever it takes to get to wherever it is that you're trying to get to. And I know for me, sometimes it's like, eh, you can get comfortable with that stable income and it, you can lose some yeah. of that grit and that, that hunger for it because your bills are paid. You can go out to eat and, and you know what I mean? So you got to be careful of that job because it is literally just yeah. over broke. They, that, they compensate you. <laughs> no, <laughs> and you have to be careful. Go ahead, Jamie. That's real. Um, because at the end of the day, um, you also have to trust that you're going to figure it out. Uh, you know, just, just like when I was, you know, decided to get into music, like, I didn't know everything, but you're not going to figure it out by just sitting on the edge of the dock. Um, you know, you just got to jump in. And once you're in the situation, you're forced to figure out certain things. Um, you know, just like when I started getting into like, you know, licensing, it's like I've never, you know, written a license before, but I got to, you know, pick up the, you know, the literature. I got to look online. I got to figure out all this information to figure out how to do a licensing deal. It's important. And one thing I say, when you're already at a nine to five, a day job, a contracted work for home, whatever, pay attention to the corporation that you're in. I don't care if you're an Amazon driver. I don't care if you work for Uber, you work for Apple, pay attention to the nine to five you already have, because there's something, even if you feel like your job has nothing to do with music, pay attention to the corporation because they're teaching you things that can also help you with your mindset with going full time, having a team, having eventually a manager to manage all the things that you need to do. I know for me in my career, you know, I have to, I do take things from corporate and I incorporate it into what I'm doing here on Artist Hustle. So never waste your job, never, and even the connections that you make at your job, you don't know who knows who, just, you know what I mean? Obviously be a little careful because you know, some people are nosy at work. I'm not gonna lie. I don't always make friends with people that I work with because they just, they don't need to know everything. But that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> I can be a little, you know, <laughs> yeah. So you just have to figure that out. But I, I love it. Danny, you're spot on, spot on. Learn the business, be willing to take a risk. But also realize that you, there's never going to be a perfect time, right? And then there's no ego involved when you go hard for this, when you're really ready to quit, but you got to figure out how you're going to make this income and maybe make it multiple ways. Figure out what way is working, humble yourself, maybe get a roommate, do what you need to do and go after it and do what you need to do, make connections. Take, take the, like you said, take the full-time job, maybe drop it to part-time or drop it to something flexible and go after it. You just have to, you can't, you can't wait around and right. you know, you just got to do what you got to do. All right. So let's talk about pitching yourself. So what's your advice, Danny, on pitching yourself to book gigs and get press um, for your music career, for yourself, for your brand? What, what's your advice about doing that? Um, like when you're the one that's doing it, not a manager <laughs> pitching you. 
Oh, um, most important thing is documentation, having documentation of what it is that you do. Um, and so this is actually going to tie into something later. But so when I first, when I got my first solo gig as an artist, as, you know, as a performing artist, um, so at the time, like I was super critical about my performances and because I have a background in photography and film, um, I have a video camera and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to take my camera with me. I'm going to record my performance. So afterwards I can go back and critique and see how to improve. But also it gave me documentation of myself performing. And so I think like that same month or maybe like a couple of months later, I saw this, uh, you know, IG post like, Hey, we're looking for performance for this show. You know, I shoot them a DM and they're like, yo, like, what's up? Like you got footage. I'm like, yes, I do. And so having that material, um, whether it be um, skills, whether it be video, um, or if you're like a producer, just having tracks that you can send to people, because when you're cold calling people, like they do want talent, but they don't know you from a pan, you know, can of paint. And so it's like, what do you do and how good are you at doing it? So if you had that documentation, like that's the first step to, you know, being able to book yourself and get press. Um, and then also just like networking because, you know, like when I, so literally how it went for me, you know, I had my first show and it turned out the DJ also had a show. So, you know, I go do this first show and they're like, yo, we got you for the next show. And then I did a show with them and it's like this snowball effect. Um, so, you know, making sure, you know, your name is in the hat. Um, whenever I go to venues, like if there's a host, like I make sure the host knows who I am. So, because, you know, if they're, because they're shouting you out, they're like, oh, such and such, or if they got something coming up, you know, they're going to throw you on. Um, so the press part, so I actually have a cheat code for this because I do have a background as a journalist. So I know a lot of journalists. And so, um, so like I did this, um, this art show. And so, um, you know, at the time I'm like at this meeting for these journalists and they're like, uh, oh, snap, like, you do photography. I'm like, yeah, I got a show. They're like, oh, send your people. We're going to, you know, do an interview, have my people on TV that weekend. And so um, so going back to the whole multi-talented thing, don't be afraid to use your other talents in the music space because they will save you a lot of time and money. If you're into graphic design, if you're a copywriter or whatever, like use your talents because that is going to save you time and money. Um, but so like if you're not in the journalism space and you're, you know, starting from square one. So a lot of journalists, they love music and more than loving music, they love to meet musicians. Like their face will light up if you're like, oh, like I sing, I rap, I do, you know, spoken word or whatever. And they literally get excited. And so you can easily build that relationship, invite them out to a show like, yo, I got a show, come on out. Um, and then, you know, journalists love comp tickets. Um, some of them, uh, especially music journalists, they're used to getting comp tickets. So I'll be like, yo, I got you a comp ticket could just come out and I'm like yo like you know we got this relationship you know maybe I'll write something about you um and so the next step to that um so actually one of my cousins she's a visual artist and she like did this to perfection uh she built a relationship with the journalist so whenever she has the show the journalist is like yo like hit me up like you know I can write about you and so from a journalist perspective if I know that you're a good quality, um, you know, interview a story, like if you call me up, I'm like, yo, you made my life easier because that's one story I don't have to figure out. So if I know like, you know, Debbie's doing this show, I'm like, cool, that's something I can check off my list. I ain't got to go interview nobody else or find nothing. Uh, so that's a good thing. And then um, newspapers, outlets, they love follow up pieces. So if you do a good show, you kill it, you come back, you know, however long later and be like, yo, I'm doing this. And like, OK, let's do a follow up, because if you read news articles, um, they always at the bottom of every arc article is like linked to this last feature this last interview so that's that's your plug right there um and then the last thing is writing press releases um learn how to write a press release that will make it so much easier when you're cold calling a journal or cold pitching a journalist because essentially a press release is like you know hey like 
Um, I'm Danny. I'm doing this show on X Data, X Venue. Uh, this is the type of music that I do, like R&B or whatever. Um, it kind of sounds like, you know, Maxwell or whoever. Um, you're giving them all this information. And then at the bottom, you have your standard boilerplate of these are, uh, you know, I'm this artist. I'm from St. Louis. I've been doing it this, you know, this long. And so basically the whole principle of a press release is to give somebody that knows nothing at all about a piece of information or a situation and allow them to be able to look at it and be like, yo, I can write a whole story off this. So if you do their job for them, it will be so much easier to get in with press. Um, the same thing with like bloggers and people that are like starting out with smaller publications, like they need stories. They're like, oh, you're a good, consistent person. I'll write about you. Don't overlook the smaller channels because like you said, they are, you can catch them when they small, right? And they like, look, we need the content. I need someone. So don't overlook. Um, I think going local matters. I know everybody wants to go national. You want to be, but going local, figuring out your local DJs, your local newspaper, your local TV stations, your local, everything local, 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 and going extremely niche into, into that when you're pitching yourself and getting to know everybody in your market helps. And go and support them. If they have events, maybe it has nothing to do with music, go support them. You know, right. maybe they have an art show or maybe they have some cooking thing. I don't know. Like maybe they have, who knows? You know, they may just be doing a webinar about something that you're, you know, kind of interested in, but just go support for five minutes, you know? So just, yeah, show that support. Uh, so there was a quick question on this before we go is creating any advice on creating that actual press kit, Danny, like where, do you, where does the artist go or a creator or producer go and create that press kit? Man, like online, like there are tons of resources to explain to you how to do an EPK. Um, there's somebody I know they have, um, I guess it's like, I don't know if they did it online or if they did it in like a creative app, but it's literally like a PDF document where, you know, it says, I'm such and such. They have images, they have videos of past performances, they have a bio. And it's, it's a man, I can't remember which artist this is, um, but it's just so clean. Like if I was booking somebody, I'm like, yo, like I want to book this person. Um, but one, just finding out everything that you need in your EPK, um, every EPK is going to require you to have images. Like that's kind of the standard, um, you know, having good quality professional images, um, invest that money. Don't try to go cheap and be like, yo, I'm going to get this little dude to shoot me for, you know, free or something like that. Like you, you're, you're investing in your brand and your image, like spend that money on some good quality images. Um, if you can't write your own bio, pay somebody to write your bio, um, like having a, a good bio is gold when it comes to doing interviews or, you know, doing shows or whatever, um, have links to your, your music, um, you know, whether it's Spotify, SoundCloud or whatever, um, YouTube, just have as much information as you possibly can and make sure that it's neat and presentable and attractive. And so the follow-up question was, can you make one, even if you don't have videos of past performances? Oh yeah. Like, don't don't let that stop you from starting start with what you have um and that's why that's probably like the biggest reason a lot of people don't um don't make one because in their mind they're like oh i don't have all this stuff yet i have to wait till i get it no you don't start with what you have if all you have is your picture and your stage name start with that and then add in a bio and then you know eventually you do a performance and then you uh you know you, you link that in or something like that like i don't care like what you got to start with the most important thing is getting started i mean yeah if you got to record yourself singing in the basement just to like get i don't i mean that's probably not the most professional thing but just <laughs> hey, have that to get started to put yourself out there like that's what you got to do and then over time like as you get better as you get those performance opportunities then you can filter in you know the new stuff and get rid of the old stuff mm -hmm. i was gonna say if you're not already subscribed to our youtube i have a video on that so if you go to our youtube page artist hustle how to create a press kit for musicians i break it down step by step what do you need in it 
different things like that. So make sure you go and, and go check it out. And there's so many other resources as well. So uh, yeah, let's go to the next conversation. I feel like we've been on this one for a while. So when you're first starting out, Danny, what are some good goals to kick off my music career? Just what type of goals should I have? I know you mentioned having a marketing plan, but just overall career goals. Uh, I would say the first goal is consistency, like finding something or a way to make sure that you can stay consistent, you know, consist whether it's um you're in the stage of writing songs, like can I be consistent with how much time I put into writing songs or the number of songs that I'm writing? If you're making beats, can I be consistent with how many beats I'm putting out or how much time I'm putting into a particular beat? Like starting with that consistency. Uh, another thing I would say is setting a, a budget of time and money. How much time am I willing to commit to this, whether it be like five hours over a week, a certain number of hours over a month or something like that. But literally, so like I have this note in my, uh, you know, in my office space. So from the hours of 12 to 5, I am committed to working on my craft. Um, you know, mostly it's like business stuff and like office stuff during the day. But at least I have a five-hour block of time, Monday through Friday, that I know I'm sitting down focused on whatever it is that I need to get done. Uh, so that's what, you know, the first uh, goal is just to have that block of time or something that allows you to be consistent. And then uh, money, that's like another big thing. Um, how much am I willing to invest in getting to where I'm trying to go, whether it's buying gear, whether it's marketing and advertising, whether it's attending workshops. Um, like I live, I set a budget every single year of like, okay, I think I'm going to spend this much on going to workshops. So like, you know, if I have um, a couple hundred dollars, I'm like, okay, I can go to a couple of workshops that free, if it's free, I'm in there. Um, but if it's like, you know, a hundred dollars, I'm like, okay, well, I can, I can throw this hundred at this workshop, get this information and better myself. Um, so I think those are kind of like the two biggest goals. And then lastly, I would say, um, be further than where you were a year ago, whether it's with your craft, like, am I better at making beats? Like, did I, you know, did I learn some new skill that can, like, up my game? Like, am I doing drums differently? Am I doing keys differently or something like that? Um, do I know more about the business? Like, do I understand, like, do I have a PR? Um, ah, well, my um, performing rights organization. So when I started off, I'm like, which one, like BMI or ASCAP, and then eventually I'm like, yo, BMI works for me just because I'm a multidisciplinary artist. Um, then the next step was like um, publishing administration. So I signed up with Song Trust. So I got somebody that can collect my, uh, you know, publishing royalties and everything like that. So just having like these little incremental goals. Um, and so I guess like in a nutshell, I would say starting off, you know, Go, go stock artist hustles page, look at the thing, the key things that you should, could do. Um, and then just literally make a list of what's actually attainable and say, yeah. okay, at the end of the year, like I'm going to have like all my um, PRO stuff set up or I'm going to have a marketing plan set up or something like that. So a year from now, what do we, um, uh, August 5th, so August 5th, 2023, you can be like, oh, so this is where I was, like, this is where I am, and write it down. Like, it helps tremendously to write it down so you can see your progress and be like, oh, I'm here, or I'm not here, like, I need to get on it. Yeah, it, it matters. And they also have accountability groups if you want to pay for it, uh, you know, business related, entrepreneur related. And don't feel like just because you see business clubs that's not related to music that you can't join, because some people like myself with fitness, I need to be in a group of people to stay motivated. Right. I can't. I'm not a fitness person. I could just go down. So even though I have a yoga mat, but I just sleep on it. No, I don't sleep on it. I just lay on it. <laughs> but I need motivation. So everybody's different. Right. So if you know. <laughs> Yo, I, yeah, I'm managing my career by myself. Yes, I'm the only one, but go get in community. I'm telling you, community matters. Get locked in and do what you need to do and set those goals and track it. If it's monthly, if it's weekly, if it's biweekly, but you got to put it on your calendar like you would any other appointment, your doctor's appointment, your family reunion, your hot, like your birthday, like it has to be an important thing that you do so that you can structure yourself as a business and not just a hobby. This is great information, Danny. So the last two questions, you kind of talk, talked about this, is how can I keep developing skills 
as an artist, as a creator? How do you develop skills? And I want to talk about artist uh, development. I think you touched on this a little bit. Yeah. Um, so for me, um, one of the first ways that I really started develop, developing myself further as an artist was reading and studying um, songwriting and music composition. Uh, because even like coming from being um, a spoken word artist and I actually like um, study creative writing in school, like, you know, I was pretty good at writing poetry. But when I made that transition to music, I needed to understand musical structures and everything like that. Like, you know, where do I want to put verses? Where do I want to put choruses? Where do I want to like, bridge codas and things like that? Uh, same thing with music composition, um, you know, investing in yourself for those basic things that are going to improve the quality of music that you can put out. And then also, you know, who knows, like you may, you know, strike gold and be like, yo, I'm actually like good at these structures and other people may bring you in on projects where they're like, yo, like do my arrangement for me or something like that. So that's like a, uh, another revenue stream right there to make money to, you know, help get you away from that full time job. Uh, music notation. Like, that's another thing. Like I started getting into learning how to actually write out sheet music because one of my goals is to be able to write for orchestras and you need, they read sheet music. I just can't be like, okay, play this F, play this A minor. They don't look at me like I'm crazy. So that's a, a level of professionalism, like being able to write out my own sheet music. I mean, you can pay people to do it, but I actually want to learn the skill myself. Um, but being able to like write out my own sheet music. So I'll be like, here you go, go ahead and play this, you know, read these measures or something like that. Um, for performing, um, one of the things I swear by um, when I'm practicing for a performance, I actually practice on a microphone and a PA system to be able to simulate what it's like being at a venue. Because how many times have you, you know, prep for a show, you know, you're practicing your piece and everything like that, or your set, and then you get to the venue and you, the sound is different because you're not used to hearing yourself over a PA system, so it throws you off. So I eliminated that whole thing by investing in my own microphone so I can, you know, literally practice. Um, and one of the other important reasons is there's actually a craft to being able to use a microphone effectively. Um, I learned this from uh, watching this documentary on Frank, Frank Sinatra, where they were talking about how, you know, whenever he's like going in, he kind of like stands back from the microphone. So it's not like blown out or anything like that. But if he's doing something that's like really soft, sophisticated and quiet, he just kind of like leans into the microphone. And so if you can like get you a microphone, you can practice that thing it will take your performance game to the next level just is what well, you know what it sounds like he's a student of his craft that is basically it study your craft always be learning always be pushing yourself and that's how you develop your skills as an artist and that's only going to help you attract the team or the different people that you want so that this can be a full-time career that you do all the time. Danny, the last question is, when do you know it's time to hire someone to do certain tasks? Is there any tasks that you do right now that you delegate? Like, was there anything that you do right now that you're like, nope, I did that before. Now it's time for me to give that out to somebody else to do. Actually, so the first things I'll say are um, taxes and legal. Um, because I'm not, you know, a tax preparer or accountant or anything like that. And I'm not a lawyer. And so, um, I read the, the industry, you know, the Bible, um, all about the music business by Donald Passman. He breaks down like how to build a team. And so I'm like, all right, well, the first things that I know for sure that I don't know how to do are taxes and, you know, some aspects of the legal stuff. And so what happened, like, even though I don't have like a personal dedicated accountant on speed dial, I changed my mindset to look at my tax preparer as a part of my team. So I'm like, yo, I got an accountant. I got somebody to handle my money and everything or do the tax portion of my money because I actually do my own bookkeeping. Um, but so even if I'm not using consistent people, that's still a mindset thing of like, okay, I have a tax or accounting person to help me um, whenever I need to like do legal stuff. Um, I have this uh, organization called Volunteer Lawyers and Accountants for the Arts. Um, every city, every major city pretty much has an organization that provides free legal resources, either specifically for artists or for anybody. But having them, like if I have, if I need to write out like a license agreement, contract, I have a dispute with somebody, yo, know, I got like a lawyer, or, you know, somebody that can provide 
provide legal services on my team. So those were the first two. Um, and so as far as getting to the manager part, um, even though I haven't reached that point yet, um, right now my barometer, barometer for figuring that out is if I feel like my investment of giving them either a fee or a percentage is going to be justified by the increased return that I can get. So, if, you know, I feel like, yo, like I can get this, um, like, you know, if I'm doing like international tours, like that's probably something where I would like, you know, want to outsource that. Um, just, you know, to like take that off of my chest. Um, but like, hey, like if you can help me book international tours, like I have no problem kicking you down like 10, 15, 20 percent or whatever it is. If I know I'm going to get all this exposure and bring in this much more money. So, um, you know, that's kind of like, I guess, a good starting point. Um, is your return going to, you know, justify your investment or have you just hit that point where like you just don't have time to do like social media posting or something like that and you're like okay well let me find somebody to do it for me mm -hmm. yeah when all the opportunities are bombarding you and you're actually losing money by not having another person help you out that is time to delegate <laughs> so yeah the, the opportunities are just flooding your email is crazy your dms are crazy your social is going crazy you know people hitting you up calling your phone yeah it's time it's definitely mm. that's the thing too the thing is you don't want to wait until you get to that point if that's your goal you don't want to wait till you get to that point to go and find someone to help you you always want to be connected that's something we keep talking about during this um this talk is just staying connected to any and everybody in the industry different people that have different talents that have nothing to do with music but like you said business like tax legal you can find that even before you need it you don't have to wait until these opportunities come and then now you're scrambling trying to find someone when really the fact you should have already had them in your network exactly. so it's important to just make sure you're always staying on top and, and always connecting with people and following up so yeah the the okay so that was kind of all of the pre-questions and there was another live question we kind of talked about this balancing your nine to five while working your craft we, you cut you answered that question already danny so i believe there was another one so so let's go in here so i recently moved to atlanta do you have any advice on building a buzz or rebuilding a team in a new city suggestion and i'm not sure if they were um, a singer or producer or whatever but i just gave this example of being a singer and so i said you know first just be a fan of other artists go to their shows learn the market and everything like that and so like if you're a singer you may you know go to a show and you see a singer and you're like they sound dope but they would sound even better if they had a background singer. And so you can be like, hey, like, you know, I'll, I'll do your background vocals for you. You know, don't even worry about getting paid or anything like that. Just get your foot in the door to network. So one, you're on stage with that person. So people can see you. They're like, oh, you know, such and such sing. And then, you know, if they come up to you, you can be like, oh, I write music too, or I produce too, or such and such. Um, and then when you're actually ready to do your own shows, the reality is that a lot of musicians, they don't just play with one person. They're circulating around. So you may be like, yo, I need a drummer. You met this drummer that was, you know, playing with the same person. You hit them up. You got a drummer. Um, and then just like little by little, you just kind of get a foothold in the industry. So, you know, maintaining a website, like there's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, yep. And so I've kind of been at this point where, you know, like I've, I've studied, I've learned like, okay, like you need an email list, you need a website, you need all this stuff. But one of the challenges is like, how do you actually manage trying to do all these things? And I even hit a point where I kind of just, you know, kind of got bogged down because yeah. I was trying to do like branding, um, you know, because I have like that visual background of like, yo, like I want to do my brand. Um, and, you know, I got to the point where I actually invested in this book on, um, on like color, color combinations, logos, typography and all that kind of stuff. So I can actually do my own branding, but I'm like, man, this was like a bigger undertaking than I thought. And so like, I'm kind of getting to that point where I'm like, all right, let's you know, clear the palette a little bit and then let's regroup so we can actually, you know, start getting forward and moving, you know, making progress. I, I said, you know, I'm going to start posting 
my loss, my, the biggest win and the loss or lesson of the week, like a lesson of the week. And last week, my live interview was like glitchy and it was just horrible. And I didn't know what to do. And if you looked at the, the post, you saw that I turned a glitchy IG live stream into a blog post, into a podcast and into a YouTube video. So the thing is now, the only thing with this situation, <laughs> I don't know how to recover from this. Um, <laughs> so I have to think about like, what the heck am I about to do if the live stream decides to cut out and I don't have the recording. So now it's, it's about having plan B and plan C and plan <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I think that's probably, um, it's a sign to like upgrade, you know, to the next level, because just like we were talking about with losing followers, because you get locked out of a counter hack, yeah. it's the same thing of, you know, yeah. what happens when Instagram fails and you can't save your live or something like that, you can't. Um, yeah. you know, is there a way that you can you know, pre-record something and play it on Instagram, or does that mean like it's time to upgrade to a different platform or something like that? So I mean, that's you know, what I'm starting. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, I I started doing like glitching, and then now just completely cut out. Now my whole, you know, the whole juiciness of it all is gone. <laughs> but you know, I still appreciate you jumping on here and talking it through. But you, like you said, Danny, see that's the lesson of the week, and that's what I'm gonna record. You know, you gotta level up sometimes. Stuff happens, and you better figure it out. And so that's what I'm going to do. Because, you know, unfortunately, this is the last interview I have for this series. I wanted to finish it out with Danny. And, um, you know, so maybe me and you, Danny, you know, we'll talk offline. But maybe what we can do is, because there was such good content. Oh my God, it was such good content. And maybe what we can do is um, do that content maybe a little differently. Maybe pre-record, you know, something different. But I definitely that your wisdom and just I, I want to make sure I, I capture all of that and maybe some other topics maybe you want to throw in there and let's just have another conversation um yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. on instagram no not on instagram live i don't know i don't know it's just i'm not trusting the platform no more this is just ridiculous this man but kidding. so this is like <laughs> uh, so that's so i was just listening to um this video uh so uh stephanie ike this pastor um on one potter's house like she is super dope like if you're into religion and everything like she literally like gives you like some good stuff from like life experience but she was just talking about like chance and randomness and so she was telling this story of how she loves to sing and you know she's on the way to service and god is like yeah all right well you know I will give you the ability to sing if you use it to serve me. He's like, okay, let's do it. So she shows up. Um, they're having choir rehearsal. None of the uh, the regular people are there. And they're like, yo, does anybody know how to sing? And she's like, oh, snap. Like, spotlight is on me. Right. And so it is imperative that you have the ability, the flexibility, the know-how, the willingness to go with change. Because, like, stuff like this happens and you could either be like, man, this is, you know, we didn't lost it, it's messed up, you yeah. know, do it, it's just not going to be there. Or yeah. you can have the mindset of like, yo, we're going to use this as an opportunity to do something bigger and better. And that's what me and Debbie are about. So we're going to do something bigger and better. You know, and, 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 and my brother's in here. That's so crazy. My brother's in here. He's a, he's actually a local personality, radio, DJ. You want to talk about multi-talented? He's out there in Miami joining live. So just in case you're joining live and you're like, what are y'all talking about? It's so ratchet right now, but basically I lost my live stream. <laughs> we lost it. Something happened. Instagram cut us off. And we are just freestyling right now and just talking about what's going on with Danny and how to pivot, you know, because on Fridays I want to post like le the lesson of the week. There's always something that you can learn in your business or just in your personal life. And this Danny's helping me because it's like you have to learn how to pivot. And sometimes <laughs> stuff like this happens for you to push beyond what you've already been doing and what's comfortable. So I, I love it. See, Danny, you, <laughs> this is why you got to stay connected with good people. Cause this, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm staying in good spirits because I know that this isn't going to go to waste. This connection, you know, our relationship in general, it's not going to go to waste. So I, you know, I, I love it. And uh, yeah, cause my next series is, um, 
coming soon. That's all I'm going to say. It's coming <laughs> soon. Thank you for joining. I, I appreciate it's almost It's almost 90 minutes later. Let's just jump into what you have going on next um, and how people can connect with you and different things like that. So, Man, um, so what's going on right now? Um, mm -hmm. So... I'm in, I'm transitioning from being like, I guess I would say like a full-time student of the music to doing more, um, or working on and working towards doing projects. So I just released a track with this um, talented musician, saxophonist named Kevin Evans. Um, so it was on his project. Um, dope collaboration, like we've been knowing each other for years and literally saw so the way that came about is, you know, he put a track up and I'm like, yo, like this is dope. Like I would write something to this, hit me in the DMs, like let's make it happen. It happened. Uh, so that dropped, I think like back in May or something and that's on his project. Nice. Uh, back, I'm forgetting the name of his project. Um, man, but oh, opportunity. So if you actually want to know what it is, shoot me a DM and I will send you the link to the track. That's how we're going to do that one. Um, so I got that. Um, and so also, I just have like a number of different projects um, that actually started off as like either writing projects or photography, photography projects that I'm working on composing music for and eventually being able to release some stuff. Um, so yeah, it's so like I do have a lot of creative stuff that's going on in the background, but okay. I also learned cool. that business first and foremost because this is a long term thing for me so I really wanted to invest first in getting set up to be able to actually collect my royalties once I'm putting stuff out and everything like that uh, so that's kind of where I am like I'm at that turning point of like now that I have that infrastructure in place I can focus more attention on actually creating on producing music on releasing projects and everything um aside from that um like i'm still working on like uh licensing deals um like i can't get into certain things but that's actually nice. a thing I'm, uh you know working on right now and so coming back to the importance of like reading of it, educating yourself so the fact that i've taken the time to read up on like the legal aspects of licensing and everything like that so like i actually know what it is that i'm talking about i know what i'm doing like i'm not just gonna jump and be like oh yeah we're, we're gonna do this and then 10 years later i'm mad yeah yeah but just yeah. having the, uh you know the knowledge and the understanding to be like okay this is kind of how i need to approach this process to make sure that i'm actually doing it correctly that's amazing. Dan always has stuff going on, man. He'd be downplaying himself. He got a lot going on. <laughs> yes, that's what you got to be. Um, so I guess like another thing. So yeah. uh, same time, like the track came out like late May or June. Um, I actually just got um, an artist support grant from our Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis. Nice. Um, Three thousand dollar grant. So that's like a whole nother story of how to actually get grant money as an artist to help you know find your career. 